Welcome back to the introduction to particle systems. In this video, we are going to add the second emitter to our fire effect, which is going to control the emission of smoke. Now, we're not going to create an emitter from scratch. A really cool thing is you can take an existing emitter, duplicate it off, make a few changes, and in a lot of cases, get exactly the effect you're looking for. Which yeah, it just saves you time. Exactly. So this is what we're going to do here. Let's select our flame emitter, right-click on it. Under the emitter submenu, we'll go down to duplicate emitter. And notice it's called flame dupe. So first thing you should probably do is change that name. In this case, we'll name it smoke. Now, the next thing we're going to do is change that material. So let's pop over to the generic browser, back over in the, uh, in yeah, the right. effects package. Yeah, and as a reminder, over on the left-hand side, we're down up under the fire section. So That's right, so we won't find smoke in there. Uh, so let's go down under smoke. And what I'm looking for is M dark smoke movement. So we'll close out our generic browser, and I'll apply this. And that looks really cool and freaky. Very volumetric. For those of uh, those of you that have seen the movie Backdraft, that's kind of what that reminds me of. <laughs> that's some very serious hot fire. It is a good with Lots of too. smoke tied in with it. All right, the first thing I'm going to change, though, is our color over life because, wow. Because uh, if we had a campfire that looked like that, you yeah, know the damage well, we could do to marshmallows. Yeah, no joke. So <laughs> let's start off with color over life. I'm going to change our uh, color value to 0.05. By 0.05, oh, we could stop right there. <laughs> and 0.05 by 0.05. We'll make it red, it'd look like the Wicked Witch of the West. Okay, so uh, now, of course, our smoke is a lot darker. It's still got a little bit of color in it, which will uh, lend itself to a nice volumetric look, which is going to be great. Now, let's change the particle spawn amount. So now that we've fixed the color, we're going to jump all the way back up to the emitter itself and change our spawn amount down to 15. We don't need that much smoke. But still, it looks a little bit funny, so let's uh, change our lifespan. This is going to change how long our particles live, which will, uh, if we make them live longer, it's going to push them a little bit higher up into the air. So uh, let's take our max lifetime and set that up to three seconds. And you'll start to notice that smoke drifting higher up in the air. I'll zoom out so we can see that a little bit better. Okay, next one, let's jump down to initial velocity. I don't really have a problem with initial size. I think that's going to work out just fine. So uh, down to initial velocity, we're going to set this. The minimum is going to be negative 15. Negative 15. I'm sorry, whoops. That transposed those numbers. And our maximum is going to, I'm sorry, our, our Z value is going to remain 75. And then our uh, initial velocity up here is going to be 15, 15, and 100. So let's just set these to 15 as well. Okay, next is going to be uh, jump down to our color over life. We already changed the color around, so now mm -hmm. it's time to take a look at our alpha. Our smoke is a little bit too uh, opaque, opaque. Yeah, a little too dominant. So uh, what we're going to do is change the, some of the point values that we've already got here. Now what I'm going to do is take my size scale that I've got in my curve editor. We'll remove it. I'm going to take our color over life, and let's send this down to the curve editor so we can see what we're doing. Let's remove out that color over life because we don't need it. We're just focusing on the alpha over life. And what I want to do is take our points that are at 0.25 and 0.75, and I want to bring those down, which we can do numerically, or we can do just by holding down Control and Alt, marquee selecting these two keys, hold the Control key, and just pull these guys down. And let's see, we only really want them to go up to about 25% opacity. And there's 29, which is close enough for, uh, for government work, if you will. So there we go. We now have our, our smoke no longer ever making it anywhere near full opacity. Right. And the cool thing about that is we were able to make that change very quickly using the curve editor in an intuitive fashion. All right, so moving on from there, we have our initial location, which I'm going to tweak just a little bit. Uh, let's see. We, it's, we have 5 by 5 by 0. Uh, I think I'm going to push things up a little bit. So let's take our maximum value, and I'll set this to about, ooh, I don't know, let's say 3. So that just means some of our uh, particles for the smoke will be born just a little bit higher. All right, now moving down from here, we have our size scale. This is where our smoke is really going to start behaving like smoke, because something's really, something wrong is going on here. By the way, if you're having a hard time seeing the smoke, I guess I should probably make a change to my background color. Mm -hmm. So you can see that our smoke is kind of, turning into little tiny puffs as it goes up. I've never seen smoke do no, that. No, smoke gets larger and larger and larger. I, in a way, it I, fades out. I kind of wish that it would do that because it would be less messy, but smoke signals would be a problem. <laughs> so yeah. uh, what we're going to do is make the smoke instead get 
bigger as it goes up. So let's take a look at our size scale curve. We'll remove our alpha over life curve. I'll send our size scale down here to the curve editor. And again, we're really only concerned with that X curve. So we can see that starting here at 0 uh, at 0.63. We're going to change that. We're going to take our out value, and we're going to set that to 0.25. So I'm going to select this guy and just hold down Control and pull him down to 0.25 or something close to it. If I'm off by a little bit, nobody will ever know. Then uh, at 0.05 along our timeline, we're going to go up to a uh, value of 1. So check this out. I'm just going to take this, uh, this key and drag it to the right. So at a, v a value of 0.5, which is halfway along our, our life, we're all the way up to full scale. Now our third and final key is saying that at 1, or at our death, we're scaled all the way down to 0. Well, that's no good. Instead, we want to double our size by the time we die. So let's hold down Control, and we'll drag this straight up into the air, and say at a value of 1, we are all the way up to, I'm almost there, 2, or 2.05. In this case, I think that's going to work. Now, you could probably get away with removing this part. Absolutely. So let's take a look at this guy. We could just come over here, and uh, if we scroll down, he's the centermost point. Let's just contract our points list, re-expand it. We have this point right here in the very middle. Notice his in value is .495 and stuff. We can click Delete Item, and now we just have this singular curve. Very nice. Now, the only catch there is that our smoke's getting a little bit big down here at the base. Now, if it were me, you know, if I was making the effect, uh, the way I would fix that would be to push my initial location up just a little bit higher. So let's maybe take our uh, max and set that to 5, and then we'll take our min and push that to 3. So now our smoke is going to be born a little bit higher up into the air. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, moving down from here, we have our initial rotation, which I think is going to work just fine, but I wouldn't mind slowing down our rotation rate because I think our smoke is just turning a little too quickly. So let's scroll down a little bit, and we'll take our initial rotation rate and set this to negative 0.125 by positive 0.125. All right, there you go. All right, so now our smoke is not rotating anywhere near as much, and it's just coming off of our fire like so. And that's really it for our smoke effect. With that, we're done, and we're ready to uh, add on our spark effect, which we're actually going to do in the next video.